Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, to another episode of Burn Your Plant. <laughs> Today with me, my sister-in-law, Jade Plants, okay? She's joining us and we're going to have a dope conversation. And, but you already know, before we do that, we have to introduce what we're eating. <laughs> I didn't make this. Just let me know. Nobody, I didn't have time today to make it, all right? Because that's just part of just being a mother, being a wife, and just being a, being an adult, right? Running around, so I didn't have time to make it. But my husband's birthday passed, and he wanted uh, Accra, Ghanaian food. is a spot called Accra in Bronx. Yes, we drove all the way to the Bronx to pick up this food, because I need y'all to open a Ghanaian restaurant in Brooklyn. But anyways, if you know of any, please let me know. So we went to the Bronx, we went to our crowd to pick up some food. This is jollof with chicken. Unfortunately, they didn't have goat. So if you never had goat, I'm very sorry about that. Um, you need to change your life around. But <laughs> this is with chicken, so that's what we are having. Yeah, and uh, should I? I kind of want to eat. I'm, I wanna, I'm hungry. <laughs> like, so we're going to take the bite, right? So let me take my lips off. We're going to get back to the show. Just give us a second. I was going to try the one um, down the block from my house, but I don't know. I don't think it's, it's in the gym. Yeah, I think it's Nigerian. Mm. Um, Niger. I know their jollof rice is different. I'm um, Niger. The jollof don't taste like Ghana jollof now. <laughs> Don't do it to yourself. Just enjoy Ghana Jalof. All right. So let's go to today's topic. So Jade is, Jade is a youngster. Mm -hmm. 21. 21, baby. I remember when I was talking about, oh, thank God for Jesus. <laughs> Child, let me tell you something. 21. <laughs> Yo. 21. I was on somebody's bar getting drunk. Okay. Just. <laughs> that's what I was listening to. Can't find where my shoes is at. Harpoon hand is just going crazy. You're doing better than me when I was seeing one. Praise God, okay? God, this is, I know you can hear me. When you run to the tape back, you can just skip that whole part. <laughs> just skip that joint. Like, I get it, I know. I, I I know. As long as I don't have amnesia, I know what happened. You ain't gotta run it back. So, 21, and today I want to talk to her about being a believer at a young age. Because growing up, for me, I grew up a believer. I grew up a Christian because I was born into a Christian home. So I knew about God and knew about Jesus as long as I can rem remember. Granted, when I was in high, um, college, I did veer off and kind of chose my own path um, away from Christ. And he, thank God, brought me back. But I kind of always knew. So I want to talk to her and just learn more about her view on this, her perspective coming from not really having, and I can correct me if I'm wrong. In a, in yeah. a Christian household. I grew up in, right. there wasn't a, I think we believed in God, but there wasn't a strong or like set foundation in like, in, in what we what we did in our day to day in terms of like maybe praying mm -hmm. or maybe going to church consistently, reading our Bible. There was none of that. Mm -hmm. but, so the belief wasn't strong or even I would say there at all. So do you think it was more of a re religion le and less of a relationship with God? I think, I definitely think so because we went to church, mm -hmm. but it was like sporadically and then it was like, okay, we go to church, maybe let's mm -hmm. say um, our church is having an anniversary. So we go because okay. of um, of that and not necessarily because we're going to build a relationship or maybe commune with, yeah, yeah. with the believers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It was more of that, more of like not consistent at all. And, and how would you say like your life was compared to you being a believer now, and you taking your own back path? It's not because my mother told me so, or my father told me so, or my auntie told me so. This is like no, you came to God on your own. Yeah. So how was it like comparing the life before the life after? I think not knowing God, I wouldn't have thought anything was wrong with my life. To me, before God, it's like, it was just me, my works, my everything. Like I was relying on myself, any problems that I got through, it was me. But being with God, it's not me, it's God. So yeah, it's a, it's a big difference. It, it definitely was like, even the things I would do, I would definitely party and, and, and drink. And I was smoking out of every young age. 
and even God showing me through all, all that, it's like, that's not the life you want, that's not the life I created for you. And even the verse Jeremiah, I knew you before you were in your mother's womb, so it's like, that's not what God wanted for me, or to even live with that amount of stress yeah. as, as a young, young girl dealing with with a lot. Just because you're a believer don't, doesn't mean you don't deal with anxieties. That's not what I'm he saying. He didn't promise That's no trials or tribulations. Tribulations, because you're going to go through it. However, the difference between being with God and not being with God is you're not You're walking with the creator of life. Like, right. So it's like he has, the Bible is the handbook to life. So it's like when you're reading it, you're learning how to walk right. this life. And I always encourage, don't depend on a pastor or somebody else to interpret it for you. Read it for yourself. Let the Holy Spirit interpret that for you. Like, I always like to pray this prayer, like, God, open my eyes to see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Like, past just ink, right? Open my ears to hear what you're telling me or open my heart to receive what you're trying to teach me. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, so there was definitely a big difference in coming with God. It was like the peace, the love, and the joy that comes with God is, is unmatched. Yeah. It's, it's not worth it to walk without God yeah. to me. The peace of God? Right, because they say Jesus is the Prince of Peace, the peace of God, and the peace of man create them themselves. The peace of God is given; it's free. You ask, you receive. You trust, you receive. The man given peace, you have to create that. Mm -hmm. Folks doing sound baths, which is demonic. Sound bath. I said what I said. Sound <laughs> baths, <laughs> okay, um, to create this mm -hmm. peace or uh, uh, burning sage to create this demonic i said what i said crystals. to create crystals to create this piece fight me i Tarot said it cards. all right all of that to create this piece but things that it is heavy because you yeah. have to keep doing it you know what i'm saying you have to keep doing these rituals and practices to get it whereas with god you just pray ask believe and let him do the work and, and Satan also wants stuff. He's not hes not like God or like Jesus. he He's not doing things just to do things out of the kindness of his heart. There ain't no so kindness. When you're doing these rituals and you get whatever you want or whatever you're asking for, just there know. is, he wants something. He, it's not free. Right. With, with God and with Jesus, walking with Jesus, it's, it's free. It's belief. Seeking him and getting to know him, it's free. It doesn't take anything but belief. I'm glad that you mentioned that because I always say that Satan's a type that will give you a gift and hide the price tag. Mm -hmm. He will hide that price. I say, oh, you can have, it. okay. In exchange, I want your it's soul. Hmm? You want you, you want my soul for just fifty thousand dollars? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like no. what do you mean? Just for some a little bit of cash, you want my whole soul, my entire soul. But that's saying okay. for you, I want your peace. Mm -mm. Okay, I want your marriage. I want your children. You do a trade off, like, and it's it's going to be a very costly trade off. And, and I believe that a lot of times the reason why people don't choose them is because they want to live in their sin. They don't want to be told. We don't want to give out the authority. We are so prideful. You want to be the God of your life. Yeah, we are so prideful as humans, mm -hmm. which makes sense because we live in a world, a fallen world where Satan controls, right? He fell because of pride. So of course, us humans are also prideful because mm -hmm. we are following Satan. So it's like, it's who is your father? Yeah. Satan or God? And I remember Tony Evans, who's a great pastor. Uh, he, a teacher too. He mentioned, there's no in between. There's no, I'm with God, I'm really not with God. You either with right. God or you're not. So either God is your father or Satan is. So if you know that you lukewarm, you got one foot in, one foot out, which God said he will spit you out if you're lukewarm. And that is very easy to understand because think about it. You like drinking lukewarm water? No. I don't. I don't like, I, I don't. I, I actually do spit it out. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I really do. So I'm like, what the heck? No. Either you're cold or you're hot. Yeah. You know. So that's how God views those who have one foot in. Have I been that person? Absolutely. I think a lot of us have, right? Yeah. One foot in, one foot out. It's just like, there's no in between. You can't say, oh, I serve you God on Sundays and do these works sometimes, but my life for real, dedicated to you, really having a relationship, I don't have that. God is like, if I'd rather you just not, yeah. just pick one. So either I'm your father or Satan is your father. It is what it, that just what it is. Like that just call it, you know. It is what it is. Oh, spade a spade. Spade a spade. All right. So my next question is, I feel old because I've like been a believer so long. But I feel so old. <laughs> but my next question, but this new generation is different, right? I mean, she's a little different because she, Jay is more mature than most twenty-one years. Like I told you, when I was only twenty-one. So she's way more mature than what most twenty-one years are doing. I wasn't doing it at eighteen. 
Oh, that's what happened. 18, I was not doing that. <laughs> I guess I waited until I got yeah. to college. Right? What would be some of the new believer struggles you say that you face as a new believer? Um, I would say, like, first coming to God, I was on a high. Like, I remember we would do Bible study, and I would be like, oh, we were talking, I don't remember what story it was, mm -hmm. but it was something about the fisherman, and he was like, I, I forgot who it was. He said, I'm not worthy to be in your presence or something like that. It was a story, I can't, I don't know if I'm I saying it right. I you remember. Yeah, and I was just like, I don't know how people could feel far from God. I don't know. Right. Yeah, I was like, I don't, I could not be far from God at all. A couple months later, like, my faith was being tested, and it was just like, you you can't say that like you're you're not god you don't know what could happen like mm -hmm. and my faith was definitely tested and it was pushed to its limit and i stopped praying i stopped reading my bible so i feel like it's being genuinely being consistent and being in the spirit and and praying and, and reading your bible because being a new believer i think it's easy to be thrown off it's easy for yeah. satan to get you because you were just in that world yeah, like yeah. you're a baby no. like so it's 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 very easy to fall out, so continuing to pray. So I feel like I was lacking in praying um, consistently. I was lacking in reading my Bible. I think I was like, everything to God was just so new. Mm -hmm. Like everything was new. God was. I felt like He was like showing me things and. He was just baby. Yeah, it, it it died really quickly. He was doing everything for you. He's oh, you're growing. Yes. Bet time to move to the next step. So even look at when you first have a child. That so that child is dependent on you for everything food, sleep. They can't even fart on your own for crying out loud. Like, them babies can't fart on you. Like, what do you mean you can't fart? You gotta move the other thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You gotta like really help them fart because they, they, they're so dependent on you. So as a baby believer, you need to depend on God. You so depend on God because God knew you knew nothing. So he would just, he gives you so much. He just mm -hmm. feeds you, feeds you until you started like a baby. Now you start walking, well crawling, then walking. Now you start to eat solid food. Mm -hmm. God is like, all right, now you're at the stage where you can start le learning some lessons, mm -hmm. right? Now he's showing you different things about you that need to change. Right. right, and different things about him. And I've said this yeah. before that, I remember 2020, I met the El Shaddai. I met El Shaddai. God, so I don't know if you know, but God have many names. Mm -hmm. Elohim, El Shaddai, uh, um, Adonai, um, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, God my peace. Mm -hmm. It's like he has so many different, and the fact that we were made is it made you think about it. Mm -hmm. We have different characteristics. There's many different parts in our character, mm -hmm. right? You could be super business Jade, but same mm -hmm. to Goofy Jade, but at the same time, Sylvia's Jade, but at the same time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sensitive Jade. There's so many different versions of us, same way, God is so He has so many different ver Elohim, El Shaddai, El uh, um, Elion, Adonai. That's Him in a different version. But then, if you don't go through these trials and tribulations, not even tribulations, but these trials and tests, mm -hmm. so all you ever know is Jehovah Jireh. Yeah. How would you ever know Jehovah Shalom, God my peace, if you never been in a situation where you need that God of peace, mm -hmm. right? So it's like those tests is not only to show you about yourself, but it's also to show you. Have a deeper understanding of who you're dealing with. Yeah. Have a deeper understanding of your father. Have a deeper understanding of who he is. So you could say, I know God. Yeah. Not just, yeah, I know God, but you only know God in scripture, mm -hmm. which is great. Or you only know God in the good times. In the good times, but you don't know God in the intimate yeah. times. Like, I could confidently say I, that when God said, I am your peace, I am shalom, mm -hmm. I know who that guy, I know what he means by it. Mm -hmm. I actually know him because I met him before. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So sometimes we need to kind of change our lens on how we view our trials, our test, because you can't pray, God, I want to know you more. He said, okay, bet. There are many other, there are different parts of me mm -hmm. and you only met one part of me. So I'm going to let you know me more, mm -hmm. but through these trials. Mm -hmm. And you be crying, but why? God? But you said you want to know me more. Yeah. What do you want? You get what I'm saying? Remember what you prayed for. Right. And some and God, he just don't do one thing for, oh, this thing is just so, so Jay could see why she's angry on time. No, no. Mm -hmm. It's going to be that. It's going to be, oh, I'm also going to show Jay that I allow him. I'm also going to show Jay that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm going to show you. It's like, it's just, it just don't go for one thing. Yeah. He does it for many things in your life. You know, so. Everything in your life. 
everything. everything. Yes, everything. correction. You need, God, you need God in everything. Every, every single, single thing. thing. What? And also praying yeah. for understanding in, in, in those in those ways when you don't understand. Because I remember I was when I first started reading, I think Damon got me the King James Bible. How <laughs> thou shall <laughs> um with us. Now that is is <laughs> I do it from time to time if I need to reference. Yeah. But girl, that phrase I said cometh unto thee. I'm like, look, man. Jesus, come on now. <laughs> but but you know you have to over time you learn. So now I could read it by reading regular English, even though it is written in old English, I'm able to differentiate or be like, okay, this means this, this means that. So we're practice, right? But God knows your heart. Yeah. He knows that you're really trying to learn. He knows that you're really trying to grow. Uh, whether if you read the King, King James or not, just obviously be careful what you're reading because nowadays they're taking stuff out of the Bible, which is crazy. Y'all fear that, y'all do not fear God whatsoever because he definitely warned us to not change anything in his word. But that's you, boo boo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not reading that. <laughs> I'm not, no, reading, I'm not reading that. Neither am I playing with y'all. Okay, it's up. To, live your life, kid. So the next question for you is how has have your viewpoint changed about life how you view things how you see things how like how has it changed since you became a believer from I, where you were before i think um your heart definitely changes and like i think i could see myself in certain situations where it's like where before my heart might have been so hard or so cold or different things and i'll see me react like emotionally or mm. So that I'm like, oh, God is changing me. Like, mm -hmm. or like, I used to hate crying. I love crying. Like, especially when I'm like crying out to God, because it mm -hmm. feels like it's like relief. I feel yes, relief, and I feel safe. Like, yeah. it's like, it's just. Yeah, Jay God, don't like he, crying. No, <laughs> no. Do you see the eyes? What? <laughs> <laughs> like, so I definitely saw God change my heart, and I think that changes it all, because it's like the way you go about things are so differently. Because yeah. feeling that love from God, it makes you wanna show it and like yeah. show the love and know where you came from for him to accept you like how dare you you know what i'm trying <laughs> to say like and he loves you like and even even in the mistakes i make now and being a new believer it's you're still gonna make mistakes it's not gonna be a perfect road but he loves you through it all and i never leave you nor forsake you so it's like you just come as you are as he said but also right. he asked us to come as children yeah you don't because, you don't clean up before you go in the shower no. so it's like come to god as is Unless you're doing tough money. Yeah, but, <laughs> but he's like, come as children, right? Because kids are just so innocent. So yeah. like, the youth. you know, they just, they're not coming like, oh, I'm so big. I'm so bad. I got this much money in the bank. God was like, you mean that paper that could set on fire? It and it means nothing? And it's also like, God, God knows the things you don't talk about. God knows the things you hide from people. So it's like, be real with God. It's no. It's he no, knows the thoughts you've had. Like, it's, yeah, it's no need to to lie to God or try to hide anything from God. Cause it's like, when Adam tried to hide from God, what happened? Adam, why you naked? No, Adam, where are you? I'm hiding. Why are you hiding? I'm naked. Like, Who told y'all you, you was naked? Uh, <laughs> dang. Imagine if Adam doing. What if everybody's walking around naked? And it was not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I don't want to see that. <laughs> no, wait, wait, guys, think about it. What if, what if, what if, right? Time out, what if, <laughs> wait, hold on. Time out, time out, time out. What if, because God was like, who told you it was naked? So it was, Adam was out here swinging and God did, it was nothing wrong with it, right? So imagine, imagine, imagine. Imagine a life before. That me. never happened and being naked. Yeah, was, we wouldn't we wouldn't even think, think how like I'm that, thinking. Yeah, no. I wouldn't have been like, ill. that's sin. nasty. It, because of wow. sin, right? That's wow. crazy. Because I remember, I've heard this. That really corrupted us because it's like it changed the whole mind. Yeah, right. Wow. Right, because think about when you see a baby come out. See that. When, when you see a baby come out butt naked, you're not thinking yeah, like, oh my gosh, put on your clothes. It's like, oh my gosh, you just got it. Yeah. Right, but if what if that's how it used to be? You don't be was thinking about, oh, why are you naked? You know what I'm saying? But I think like, even I've heard this before where, think about it, the reason why people start locking their doors because of sin. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like you forget your car, you forget to lock your car and you find out the next day you having a panic attack. Mm -hmm. You look at the seat, somebody is in the trunk trying to <laughs> jab you, like, you know, but I'm just thinking like, what if? Everybody would have been running free balling and it'll be no problem. What do they do during winter? That's a different, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think they had winter in Eden. Probably didn't. The world would be, would the world just be all together different? I don't know. 
because I'm just going by the description what Genesis mm -hmm. was describing how Eden looked like. Water was flowing. It, it sounded like yeah. spring. It sounded beautiful. It sounded beautiful. And we stuck in this ghetto. Like, <laughs> go, yo, we are stuck in this ghetto. Pollution. <laughs> Tornadoes. Global warming. Global like, warming, warming. Allergies. Like, inflation. Infla you know, watch my old video. <laughs> inflation. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is so ghetto. Do you guys know? Did you know that we, were, we weren't actually supposed to work? Yeah. So whenever you have to clock in for work, <laughs> just remember that. We weren't supposed to work. It all happened because of the fall. And God cursed, when God cursed Adam and Eve, he said, now you have to work, basically, I'm paraphrasing, but you basically have to work for food. You gotta work for everything that you have. We weren't supposed to work. That's why every Monday sucks, guys. This is why, okay? This is why everybody get excited for Friday, TGIF, because it's not normal. So I love Fridays at work. I'd be so happy, I'd be skipping. Like, yeah, when teachers you, be mad, I'd just be like, it's why they Friday. Mad? Why they mad? Not for this reason. I'd be hyped. But we weren't supposed to work, we were supposed to die. That's why even as normal as death is, it hurts the same. Yeah. It's still not normal. You get what I'm saying? Because it was not, I was just on the co-worker that it was not supposed to happen. So yeah, Adam and Eve, um, they, they, did, they did us win. But you know, it's so easy for us to be like, man, I can't wait to talk to Adam and Eve when I get to heaven. Shut up, because if you were them, you probably would have met. did the same thing. First of all, probably worse. but we live in, we live in, the, uh, we live, on earth now, and we still disobey yeah. God left and right. So don't sit there and be like, because that's what Christians say. Oh, Adam and Eve, this or how can the Israelites do all of this after God's? Bro, it's always easy to say what you won't do until you're in the situation. I've learned that the hard way. I'm never gonna do this. Never gonna do mm -hmm. that, that, that. I said I would never be far from God. I would never stop praying. I would never stop reading my Bible. It happens. You get through tough times, but God is there. Do it all. You think He's not there? You think maybe He's mad at you? Right. He's there. But what, he's what not like typical parents. He's he's your father, your heavenly father. Like right. he's there through it all. Yeah. Did you lose faith in him, or did you start dependent? Go back to your old. It's like muscle memory, right? You go back to how you did things the old way. I think I lost faith because that's when I lost my job. I got fired. So I think I definitely lost faith. I didn't see in any way me being able to come back from that. Like it, the world felt like it was ending. And then I felt like I was called to teaching, and then I was losing my job as a teacher. Mm -hmm. So it was like, well, as a para, but it was like, it was like I had no faith in God. I didn't have. I felt like my foundation was very rocky mm -hmm. um, f before I lost my job. Mm -hmm. In terms of, I wasn't reading, I wasn't praying. Mm -hmm. So when it happened, it was just easy to it's just fall off. off. It was extremely easy, and then that's why coming and staying with you guys, it definitely helped because. I just still needed the spirit of God That's what around me. Like, yeah, comes. you need, you do need community. You need people around you who believe in God, who mm -hmm. know Jesus, who knows his love, who's yeah. been through those tough times and can talk you through it and aren't condemning you or just yeah. being so shameful on you yeah. and just allowing you to be real. Because yeah. I remember during the Bible study, I remember I cried because mm -hmm. I think I, it was my turn to pray mm -hmm. and I hadn't prayed to God. Mm -hmm. And I remember I cried and you were asking me why I was crying. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't feel close to him. I don't feel like I know him. I don't feel like he's listening to me. I don't feel like he's hearing me. And it's like during those times he is, especially yeah. during those times especially he wants you. Right. He wants you to call on him, right. and and be, he'll he'll be there for you. It's like, but it it, it I, I think that was my first big situation, and and that definitely taught me a whole lot about yeah. it because when I came when I started praying and reading, he was there like yeah. immediately. It didn't happen two days later, three days later. Immediately, I felt his love. Yeah in his peace again and it's like and I think that's the important part is being real with your feelings yeah with him like I remember one of my old pastors said this before God is not offended by your honesty no. keep it a buck don't sit there and be like I'm gonna went I went through some stuff and I went I straight went to God said yo God you verbatim yo God you played me not heavenly father no yo God you played me obviously be respectful yeah. he's almighty about being so real, you played me. You said you was going to do this. I trusted you for it, and you let this happen. You violated, exact words. You violated. I felt like I can't trust you with this situation ever again because you don't know how to do your job. I think my better person are doing this job better than you are. And that was my prayer. And I kid you not. I'm not saying not go ahead and go disrespect God now. Don't get crazy cursing up. He might slap with his heavenly hands. I don't think he want that. However, be honest. When I tell you after that prayer, that's when God really started healing me. 
It's almost like it felt like he was saying, I've been waiting for you yeah. to keep it a buck yeah. for so long. Thank you for finally doing it. Now I feel like I can Because he knows. He knows that you the, he knows what you deal with. He yeah. knows he knows the things that he you need to be healed from. Right. He knows. You just have to ask. And you have to ask and just be a keep it a buck. Yeah. Sometimes I hate them pretty prayers. Like, no, I want the prayers when the snot is coming down your nose. You get what I'm saying? I want Ugly to be cry. Like Viola Davis. <laughs> <laughs> and then the snot blows the bubble and go back in. Like <laughs> it needs to be like that sometimes. Because for he knows everything. Who are you lying to? You can lie to the rest of us. Because we humans don't know. You can't lie to him. But he knows your mind, he knows your heart, he knows what the thoughts that you deal with, he knows the feelings you deal with. Just be real with him. You get what I'm saying? And sometimes Satan loves secrecy and what Satan hates is exposure. Shine the light on that lies that he's telling you, okay? And what I, listen, me and my husband go through this all the time. Same be telling him one thing, telling me one thing. We talk about it. Light is shining. I'm I'm shining. I'm shined on it. Disappears. You know what I'm saying? So you have to be real with God. This is not the time to be pretty and just mm -hmm. no. Be that's a like community love. matters. Community. community matters. It does matter because even when we do our gatherings together, it to hear people talk about God, talk about their struggles. It's it's nice to hear oh, that. I'm yeah, I'm not alone. I'm not alone in my struggle. I don't have to keep it all in. Oh, right. we can talk about it, and like you guys understand because sometimes you can't talk about it with non-believers. Yeah, it's it's hard it. to. It, they don't get it. So it's it's nice to have community and people who genuinely yeah. like understand and, and I, give you heavenly advice, advice not no and not world fight advice. that chick yeah. like hold on God pray for her maybe <laughs> <laughs> the community is needed whether if you live in new york live in south carolina north carolina one of them carolinas you live in florida if you're a believer start bringing in the community and when if god leaves you bring those who don't even those who don't believe so they could become a believer too so they their lives could change but don't sit there and say, that, oh, I'm going to do this thing alone. Yeah, right. You are a lone wolf in the in the woods and Satan is ready to snatch you up. You cannot do it alone. Okay? So community, and I'm glad you brought it up, community is so important. Very important. Very Especially important. as a new believer. Especially. Oh, yes. Especially. Because you don't know much. You have to pay attention. But in order for you to notice and pay attention and be aware of what's happening, you have to be in your word. So you know how things are supposed to look compared to what it is. You get what I'm saying? So you can notice the difference. Because sometimes Satan is not that dramatic. He's not gonna make everybody a crackhead or a prostitute. You make it subtle. Oh, tell them two times I'm not gonna read the mm -hmm. word. Oh, I'm not gonna listen to worship. I listen to, I'd rather listen to make the styling. Oh, I'm not going to do this. Oh, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. And slow drag, next thing you know, six yeah, months right. in, you getting high. Mm -hmm. Not just on weed, now we doing Crack. What a, no, okay. <laughs> I don't know what else they do nowadays, but now you just and sometimes not even that. Sometimes you just so far now you went to crystals and all this yeah. other nonsense. You know what I'm saying? And you sitting and looking at yourself like, how did I get here? You could be in church and somebody's singing. You stop. You paying attention to words that or being in the spirit. You worry about oh that pitch is nasty. Like why are they singing like that? You know what? You saying that about worship? I used to be like um, embarrassed to worship in front of people. I used to be like embarrassed to like praise God in front of people. I don't know. I used to be like, oh yeah, no, like, yeah. Like, uh, every praise. Remember and then remember when? Every remember when I went with you guys um, to on New Year's and you were you were worshiping and y'all you were, were crying. I was sitting there like, mm, okay. <laughs> but that's before I knew God, mm -hmm. so it was. I think that carried on, but. I think it's so crazy that I used to be embarrassed to worship. I mean, I'd be ugly crying. Every prayer, Matt off pet. Yo, I can't <laughs> sing to save my life. You know when you sing, you know you can't sing, it gets to a certain part and your voice don't come anymore. <laughs> so you're just like, Jesus! Yep, that's me. Don't care I'm who's gonna judge me. The drums be too loud, so. You used to make a joyful me. noise and no, I don't care because together we sound great. Amazing. Just don't give Harmony me the mic. And all. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I think it was in like September. I had like a bump on my um, my above my lip, and there I went to the doctor, and I'm like, I'm doing all this. Hey things. yo, I'm <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was it was. <laughs> and I remember like I, I, I teach middle school. <laughs> I did I did my research, and they were like, it's a cold tour. Went to the doctor, got appointment the next day, find out. She tells me it's a cold sore, right? So then I go to the hospital, whatever, and they're still sticking on this cold sore thing. Go to the hospital, <laughs> they 
like send me home or whatever but my face is like severely now swollen it started off with a bump now it's swollen so I eventually go to Brooklyn Hospital and find out it's shingles and they tell me shingles is caused by stress and during that time there was a lot of stuff going on with family and I think I recently lost my scholarship around that time and then I came from retreat so I'm on a high for God and then all these things are happening and I think I was walking in my own and walking in my flesh like I was not relying on yeah and my own strength I wasn't relying on God at all during that time I was kind of like okay I have to do this to fix this and that to fix that and this and that and this and that and this and that and I'm also in school Monday through Thursday and I'm also going to work and God sat me down like he sat me down he told yeah like yeah he told me like hey, you can't do it you can't do it by your own works you can't do it by your own strength you can't do it without me and I was in that hospital for a week and I remember just sitting there like, wow. Like I, it just, everything that was going on, it was just replaying. I'm just like, wow. And I remember it was like a big wake up call for me. Like, I can't do this. Like, I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna, I feel like I was going to kill myself. Like with the amount of stress I was putting on myself. And it's like, you have God. Yeah. So why not run to God? Not yeah. run into anybody else, run to God. When you have that struggle, or that stress, run to God, pray to God. Like it's, he will always answer. Yeah. yeah, so I don't even think it was the worry of my actual health. It was deeper than that, at least for me. It was, it was. you're not depending on me. You're not, you're not calling on me. Like all these things, I don't think I had prayed to God yet about my tuition. So it's like, if you're stressing about it, pray to me. Like there's, why do you think there's nothing I can't help you with or there's nothing I can't fix? So I think I just had the wrong view of God to me because I feel like I kind of put um, more of like maybe what my parents showed me or stuff like that onto God. And it's like, God is not like that yeah. and in, in everything. And in when I sin or I do this or I do something he doesn't want me to do or if I'm disobedient mm -hmm. or even if I'm stressing and I have all this, he's, nothing is too much for him or it's never like, Oh, forget about her. It's, it's not like it's important to God and he wants to hear from you. And I wasn't talking to him, so it was. And I think sometimes that's a mistake that we make. We make. We tend to look at God the way we look at our parents. Yeah. I've done that. Many of us have. Remember, they're, they're He's human always beings. Telling you, yeah. It's always telling us, I'm not your mom's. Yeah. I'm, imagine if Brad God was from Bronx or us from like the Bronx. I'm not your mom's. I'm not your pops. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm not them. So I'm stop. I have, and I have a friend who struggle with that where there's view God the way they view yeah. their parents. I'm like, you we have to get out of that. Which I mean it's hard because, you know, physically on earth everything we know is what we know. Yeah. You know, and you have to get out of there and see him at, for who he is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We can because we don't like it when let's say you're in a relationship and the guy had a really bad relationship with the ex girlfriend mm -hmm. and he comes to you treating you the same way he treated yeah. ex it's like, well, hold on. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I'm not her. On you. <laughs> like what? Right. I, yeah. What's up? That's some type. But we do that to God a lot of times. Like he's like, yeah, hold on. I'm, I'm not that. that. I'm, I'm not holy. That. Like, like I'm holy. I'm he's better. the only. Oh, like Jesus lived the perfect life. Right. No, no other human can say that. Not your mother. No. Not your father. Nope. So definitely not this drunk. Yeah. <laughs> no. So you definitely you <laughs> like, can't. You can't. Um, I'm not a drunk about that. I'm talking about back then, okay? <laughs> you can't put your parents and God in remotely. You can't put anybody in the same situation no, as, no. same conversation as God. He is holy. He is the only holy. So what, did he fix that whole situation with the scholarships? I know you got your job back and... I did. Because um, she didn't even do nothing, to be for real. I, I thought that was just a test, though. I think that was a test, but I failed. I failed horribly. I failed horribly. Why I failed hard. I failed. Um, I failed because I was trying to walk away from teaching, and that is. But you didn't do it though. But remember, I set up the test for the police. You didn't take it though. But I still. That was still my unbelief. That was still. That was. That I didn't. I didn't do it. Okay. I didn't. To me, I feel like if I wasn't talking, well, maybe, maybe I wouldn't I consider a fail. fail. Maybe a sixty-five. Okay, you, 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 it was a low, it was, <laughs> it was a, a low, low it was a low, right? Because I think I'm glad that the Holy Spirit was still telling me to talk to you guys. Mm -hmm. Because you guys, I feel like, were setting me straight yeah. when it came to like, I remember I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna take the police test. And y'all looked at me like, like, what the heck? What are you? Protecting like, who? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, what, what are you, <laughs> what are you doing here? So. I definitely think my, my belief is tested because I think I gave up so easily. I was just like, okay, I'm not doing it. Like, okay, 
Uh, yeah, and I was kind of like, I don't care what God, I don't, I don't care what God said. Yeah. Like at that time, I was like, I don't care what He yeah. says. I don't want to do it. Like, yeah. I, I'm, I'm okay. It's not yeah. for me. And I was just being, because what was I gonna do? Being a police officer. Now I'm thinking about, it, I'm like, bro, what, 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 were, what were you, what were you that's thinking we were, for that's real? What like, we protecting them rats. Make sure they get like, him safe. Because what? <laughs> <laughs> and we clowned her. Like, yeah. it was so. I was like, what are you talking about? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But sometimes we. We be so butt hurt. We act like yeah. kids. Yeah. <laughs> you don't get my way. Some dumb, dumb. Cause I, d I didn't pray to God during that. I wasn't praying to him. It wasn't like, so it's was like, how are you so like. Ready to get Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah that, that time frustrating. And me you know. time, probably guys was just sitting there, oh, she gonna come back, whatever. Yeah. You know, I'm, cause he's probably not gonna make it happen. Mm -hmm. You know, but. But he made a way with, with everything even that I, I was dealing with, I feel like. When I came back after, it was a total difference. Like I was way, the stress was not on me. My tuition, it, it got paid. It wasn't like, I didn't have any problem with it. It was actually easy. So I, it got paid. The, and it's like anything I was stressing, it's like it became it's small. Good. Yeah, right. it good. became small. It's like, okay, this is all you needed me to do. Yeah. Like this is all that it was. That was your first road test. And to you at that time, it was a big deal. Yeah. Huge to a, to a seasoned believer is just like, oh, uh, it's, it's not, it's nothing. That's why we didn't take it that serious. Yeah. It's nothing, but it's almost like you know when you have um, middle school kids when they have they're not talking to their little friend. They're like, oh my gosh, yeah. my world is over, world. and you just sitting them like, girl, if you don't go sit down, lunch. right? Like if you don't go sit down and go do your essay <laughs> that you misspelled a thousand one of them <laughs> words, like go focus on that. Yeah. But at that moment, it's that is, world. yeah, that is what is big, and that is what is so like overbearing for you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And then when you go through those trials, that's when, when you come back, you come back a stronger believer. So now somebody else will come to you like, this is happening, just like, ah, you, you'll be all right. Yeah, pray. pray, trust God, you're gonna be all right. Pray. God is testing your faith, you get what I'm saying? So pray. there are many seasons, there are many, many, many seasons. Once, once again, to symbolism, we got seasons on earth. Our life got seasons, mm -hmm. right? So. He, like, there's so many symbolism in and, everything. And find, find joy in the, the trials, like, because it, it teaches you something. Like, it, like, even the stuff on my face and losing my job, I came out way... She make, she make face jokes. <laughs> like, I, like I, I, it, come, it makes you come out way stronger. stronger. Like, and you yeah. come in, you come in like, oh, like, you come in with a sense of like, oh, like, God got me. Like, it's like... Really? Like, that's what you got? That's what you're gonna throw at me? Okay, okay. like. Like, my thought will always be, do you know who my father is? Like, at first, when you first used to say that, I used to be like, um, yeah. I'm gonna think about your real father. <laughs> like, no, 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 But no, no, I, no. really, do like, do you know who my father is? Like, I don't, I mean, I, even at work, I had a coworker tell me like, what did she say? Basically, like, okay, you know, usually when you, um, you say, oh, oh, cause it was like chaotic at work. And everybody's worried. I'm like, and I'm just like, oh, whatever. Yeah, okay, we well, you know. But she just be like, you know who my father is? You're dang on right, because yeah. you can't move me unless God give you the green light. And if you were able to move, because God gave the green light. And if God gave the green light, it's my time to go. I could care less what you do. You can't fire me. No. You cannot. I'm sorry. And if I got fired, either God let it or because of my disobedience or whatever, and he just said, like, okay, I'm going to teach you a lesson. But I, child, like she said, find joy in the hardships. Find yeah. joy in those difficult times. You broke, make jokes about it. God, what's up with that manna? Because we ain't got no money. Yeah. <laughs> that is all I have for today. That was a great conversation. That was a great conversation. You have anything else to share to tell the people? We know follow Jesus. That's pray. pray. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Pray. <laughs> Read your Bible. <laughs> like, yeah. Follow God. Have belief. Yeah. And um, have faith. And be obedient. Yes. Please, obedience is such a big part. And I feel like it's not talked about enough. He literally said, well, God, I sacrificed my life. I sacrificed my God's life. But obedience is better than sacrifice. Be obedient, right? So um, even That's with bad. Isaac and, and Abraham, mm -hmm. he was about to sacrifice his child. Oh, yeah. But then what God, that what pleased God the most was the fact that he was obedient to God's orders. Even when he didn't like what God was saying. Yeah. He been praying all these years for a child, yeah, child got said, yeah, go kill him. Hmm? Okay. God, we got mad rats in these streets. You don't want that? Like, you don't want these sheep. You don't <laughs> right. want this lamb. You don't want, like, you lamb. want, you don't want chicken. Want... I wonder if they ate chicken back then. I never hear the Bible talk about chicken. I don't hear about them talking about chicken. Pigs? But they, but they. Nah, that, that's where the they, demons they went. Put the no, demons yeah, into yeah. The pigs. pigs. So, yeah. <laughs>
I, yo, I never hear them talk about chicken. You think chicken is it? You think chickens are GMO? GMO? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're making the lab chickens now, so. But this chicken was mad good, though. Yeah, but, I'm I'm <laughs> <laughs> but no, no lab chickens here. <laughs> but yeah, so that is all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, join the conversation. Leave, yeah. leave comments. Let's talk about it. Um, and I hope that your walk with God gets stronger. If you don't have one, I pray that you get to know him and give him a chance. Okay, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy and have a blessed week. Okay? All right, bye. <laughs>